Hi, that's an Asus RTAX86U and in this video we're going to talk about one of its features called Smart Connect. Before starting this video though, I want to mention that I purchased that wireless router a while ago and after I did some sort of an extensive research or comparison between the wireless routers that were available in the market at the time. It was a lot of work, but I think it was worth the trouble. All of that is documented in that video series, so please check it out if you're interested. Also, I've already showed how to connect the router to the network and do the basic configuration to make sure the internet is connected and the Wi-Fi is up and running. Those videos are linked below as well. But it's about time we did some more advanced configuration on this router too, right? So that's what we're going to do from now on. And in this video, we're going to talk about the Smart Connect feature. If you're using the ASUS app, this is how you can access the Smart Connect. And if you're using the web interface, this is where you can find it. Smart Connect is actually a Wi-Fi feature and the router must be at least dual band in order to make sense for it to have this feature. Let me give you some context. For example, in our ASUS AX86U, which is a dual band wireless router, I can create a wireless network for each frequency band and they can have different names and passwords. Now on my laptop, if I want to connect to this one, I can find it here, enter its password and connect. Or if I want to connect to the other one, I'll do the same. Find it, enter its password and connect. Now let's say I'm connected to this one and I'm also on an important video conference call. All of a sudden the quality of this network gets really bad. My video starts freezing and they cannot hear me well. I don't know if the issue is my laptop, the ISP or the Wi-Fi. It might actually take me quite some time to realize that if I just switch to the other wireless network, everything is going to be fine. But the thing is, the same issue can also happen on this frequency too. So how am I supposed to know which frequency band is the best one so I can use that? Is there any way that my laptop could automatically find the best one and connect to that? Yes, and that's actually what the Smart Connect feature is all about. If I enable it, as you can see, I have no longer the option to create two separate wireless networks and I can only create one. But what it actually does is to create two networks with the same name and password. Basically, all these settings will be the same for both networks. The only things that could be different are the channel settings, which is kind of obvious because each frequency has its own channels. This way when I want to connect to the wireless network on my laptop, I will see these two as one network. If I connect to it though, then the laptop would decide whether it should connect to the 2.4 GHz network or the 5 GHz network. Basically this way I'm no longer in charge of selecting the frequency bands and the laptop will connect to the one that it's thinking has the better quality, better data rates. I can, if I want, configure the laptop to always prefer one frequency over the other one. Now you might be wondering what exactly the job of the router is in this uh, smart connection because it's the laptop who's making the decision and basically guiding and steering itself between the bands. All the router does is just to create two networks with the same names and passwords. How hard is it just to use the same names and passwords for the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz networks? That's something that I can manually do myself too, right? That's actually true, I could also do that. I mean, instead of enabling the Smart Connect, or if a wireless router doesn't have the Smart Connect feature, I can simply create two wireless networks with the same names and passwords. This way, the clients are the ones that decide which band is it that they want to connect to. But with the Smart Connect, based on my requirements, I can define some rules on the wireless router that can make the band selection, band steering process much better. This way the router is also involved in this process. As you can see, there are four sections here. And the first one is steering trigger condition. This is actually the criteria that must be met to initiate the band steering. Obviously for each frequency band, I can have different criteria. Here I can define if the bandwidth utilization of this frequency band is more than a certain rate, if the signal strength is less or greater than a number, or if the data rate is faster or slower than a certain number, then it should trigger the steering process. 
I can also define whether it should only consider the AC clients, non-AC clients, or maybe all of them. All right, so let's go ahead and define a rule here, which can hopefully help us to better understand the situation. Using a Wi-Fi analyzer app on my phone, I realized when I'm about to enter the backyard, the RSSI of the 5 GHz band is around minus 70. But that number for the 2.4 GHz band was around minus 55. So, I want to make sure when I'm connected to the 5 GHz band and I'm going outside, my device would switch to the 2.4 GHz band. Or in other words, when the RSSI of the 5 GHz band is less than minus 70, the router should trigger the band steering. But when I come back inside, it should switch back to the 5 GHz. Or in other words, when I'm connected to the 2.4 GHz network and the RSSI is greater than minus 55, it should trigger the band steering. But let's just not forget, that was only the steering trigger condition. In the next section, we will select the clients that are going to be steered when the condition is met. In my case, I want the clients that have the same condition as the one who triggered the band steering to be selected and steered to the appropriate target band, which is something that we can define in the next section. This is a dual band wireless router. So for the 2.4 GHz, the target band would be the 5 GHz. And for the 5 GHz, the target band would be the 2.4 GHz. Now, the clients can be steered to the target band if its bandwidth utilization is less than the value that I select here. This is something that I think makes much more sense if the router is tri-band, because if the bandwidth utilization of the first target band is not less than the value here, then the client can be steered to the second target band. The last section is to prevent the clients from bouncing back and forth between the bands. So for example, with these numbers, if the client has been steered two times within 60 seconds, it won't be steered again for 180 seconds. Okay, so let's quickly recap what happened in this video. First of all, if I use the same names and passwords for the 2.4 GHz, 5 GHz, or even 6 GHz networks, if I have a Wi-Fi 6E wireless router, then my wireless client device, for example, my laptop, will see all of them as only one network. But if I connect to it, then the laptop will decide which frequency band it should connect to. Now, if I enable the Smart Connect feature, it does all of that. Plus, I can also, based on my requirements, create some rules that make it possible to steer the clients to the appropriate bands more effectively. But that doesn't necessarily mean that everybody should use it, because some people might benefit from having two separate wireless networks with different names or passwords. For example, I personally don't use it, because I have dedicated my whole 2.4 GHz band to my smart home devices and uh, security cameras and I'm not going to use it to connect any other clients. But that's just me. What do you think about the Smart Connect feature? Is it something that you have been using or you think you might be using in the future? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Share it if you think others might like it too. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you again and I will see you soon.